Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode on the topic of artificial intelligence and wireless communication in our Think6 video series. With the advancements in artificial intelligence and its form of machine learning, many researchers and key industry players believe that a future 6G standard will natively support AI and ML for the air interface. After introducing the basic concepts and some use cases in the previous videos, today it's time to see AI in action. We will have a look at the live demonstration to observe the potential of machine learning in the physical layer. We are very excited that we partnered up with a team of researchers at NVIDIA to build a testbed to verify the performance of a neural receiver in a real-world hardware-in-the-loop setup. I'm glad that Sebastian Kamera from NVIDIA is joining us today here. Sebastian, you have been working on neural receivers for quite some time now. Could you introduce the concept to our viewers? Sure. So welcome also from my side. It's great to be here and to give you some inspiration from NVIDIA's research perspective of how future wireless receiver algorithms could be designed. Today, we will look into a research prototype that replaces significant parts of the classical physical layer algorithm by trainable neural networks. So in particular, we will replace channel estimation, equalization, and demapping by a single neural network. So let's have a look at the classical system first, where the task is to reliably communicate between a transmitter and receiver over a noisy channel. In traditional signal processing, we have the transport block encoding, modulation, and OFDM mapping. And at the receiver side, we usually do the somehow inverse operations of, of these um, encoding blocks. Now, um, the idea, or the core idea of a neural receiver is to replace the channel estimation, the equalization, and the demapping by a joint neural network that jointly learns to perform these tasks in a single signal processing step. Let's have a detailed look at what we will show in this demo. So the scenario is a 5 GNR compliant multi-user MIMO setup. For the demo, we have two users each equipped with two transmit antennas and the receiver has four receive antennas. The architecture itself is flexible, can be easily adapted to different setups. In many cases, this works without retraining. We work with 5 GNR compliant signals, in this case for the push, so we work in the uplink direction and 80 megahertz bandwidth. Great, thank you, Sebastian. This is quite an advanced scenario. Researchers performed lots of investigations on neural receivers and simulations in the past. We are very excited that our Roden Schwarz test and measurement instruments bring the development and verification of neural receivers to the next level. For the first time, we validate the functionality and the performance of a neural receiver with a fully 5G compliant RF signal in a hardware in the loop test setup. Let's have a brief look at the testbed setup. All the way on the left side, you see our signal generator, which generates the MIMO signals for the two users that are then captured by a signal receiver. The signal receiver down converts the data and streams it out to our 5G uplink measurement system, which performs time synchronization and FFT calculation. Afterwards, the resulting data is streamed to the server by NVIDIA, which is equipped with a GPU and executes the neural receiver. Here you see our Roden Schwarz SMW200A vector signal generator and two SGT100As that allow us to generate the four MIMO 5G signals. You can see here on the screen that we configured the two users and that each user is faded individually and that noise is being added individually as well. We are operating at a carrier frequency of around 2.1 gigahertz, although this is configurable. The transmitted signals are captured by our Rode & Schwarz MSR4 multipurpose satellite receiver and down converted. We stream the IQ samples to our Rode & Schwarz server-based testing signal analysis system via 10 gigabit ethernet and afterwards to the NVIDIA GPU. Those two devices are not visible here in our setup. All right, enough introduction. Let's have a look at the live demo. What you can see here are simulated transport block error rate curves. Sebastian, can you explain the curves a bit before we start the measurement? We can see four curves, which are all evaluated for the same scenario and the same input data, but for different receiver implementations. The gray curve shows the block error rate on a transport block level, including the entire physical layer effects, versus the SNR for a perfectly known channel at the receiver. This is obviously not realistic, but gives a lower bound of what a perfect system could possibly achieve. The blue curve shows the performance for least square channel estimation, which has a fairly low complexity and can be considered as a practical baseline. The orange curve shows an approximation of maximum likelihood that achieves a great performance, but is not practical due to its very high computational complexity. And finally, the green curve shows now the performance of the neural receiver after training. As can be seen, it performs close to the maximum likelihood performance 
but with a much lower computational complexity. Okay, so in this demo, we will now verify the performance of the neural receiver with the Rodian Schwartz test and measurement instruments in the test bed that we just introduced. Clicking the button here above the curves starts the operation of the entire test bed. We're sweeping over the SNR range, starting at minus 1 dB, and increment the SNR configured in our signal generator by 1 dB with each measurement. The blue dots that are now starting to appear show the measurement results, so the transport block error rate that is determined at the novel receiver output. It takes a little while for the entire measurement to complete, so let me give you some background on the training in the meantime. The model has been trained on a very diverse urban microchannel model, as specified by the 3GPP, with random user speeds and also random user locations. For the evaluation, we then chose individual channel models for each of the two users. For the first user, we selected the TDLB model with the 100 nanosecond delay spread and a Doppler frequency of 400 Hz. For the second user, the TDLC model with a 300 nanosecond delay spread and a Doppler frequency of 100 Hz. We could also pick different channel models as long as the characteristics are included in the training dataset. As more and more blue dots appear now, we can see that the measured block error rates are very close to the ones obtained in simulations. So it's great to see that we are able to reproduce the simulation results in our real-world testbed setup using the fully 5G compliant RF signals generated and received by the Rodian Schwartz test and measurement instruments. So Sebastian, let's talk a bit about the technical details. Can you give us an overview of how the neural receiver was trained? Sure. So for the training, we have developed Shona, which is NVIDIA's GPU accelerated link level library for the physical layer. So it's an AI native library, so we can um, have machine learning and machine learning tools in, already built in. And it also supports the generation of 5G compliant signals, such as in this case, the, the push signal. And um, that helps us to generate the synthetic data set that we use for training. And in particular for this uh, neural receiver, the, the problem is that these neural receivers tend to overfit, which means actually if we would have just trained it for the specific channel model that we are using here, we would overfit to the specific setup. But what we actually want in practice is we want a receiver that works for a wide set of different channel realizations. And for that, we use these built-in channel models in Shona and sample different user speeds, different delay spreads and different um, Doppler spreads, for instance, um, Doppler shifts. And um, the idea is to, to get a very rich uh, data set of different channel realizations and to get a very universal receiver after the training. So the training itself roughly takes two to three days here, depending on the performance that you want to achieve. Okay, great. Uh, we talked about complexity a bit already. Um, what performance do we see here? So at the moment, we are at roughly 50 slots per second, which is an equivalent of 7 to 8 megabit per second in terms of throughput, information rate throughput. Um, but you have to see that Shana is for fa fast prototyping and to have um, research prototypes and, and kind of realize your ideas fast, but it's not made for real-time implementation. So the next step would go towards low-level implementations of such a concept. Okay, final question. How can you imagine this being applied in 6G? So beyond pure block error rate or bit error rate and performance improvement, of course, our long-term vision is to have a, a site-specific base station that can actually learn to improve the performance even after deployment. So think about um, a base station that is deployed close to the highway where we have a high user mobility or another base station that is actually deployed in some indoor factory environment where the mobility is rather low or think about different delay spreads depending on the environment where the um, base station is actually deployed. And um, we think that these neural receivers could be one technology or one enabler that enables such a site-specific base station that could be even retrained after deployment and could continuously improve the performance um, during the lifetime of such a base station. So this is one vision we have for 6G and one area of research where we actively work on. And we hope that there will be um, a lot of new insights and breakthroughs in the next years to come. Great. Thanks for the insights, Sebastian. We are very excited that together with NVIDIA, we can transfer the concept of a neural receiver from theory to practice using our Rode and Schwartz test and measurement instruments. With such a test bed in place, we are now able to take the next steps and support research in addressing key concerns such as complexity, power consumption, and also the throughput of neural receiver implementations. Even though research is still in an early stage and there is still lots of work that needs to be done, we are very excited to show the potential of AI in the physical layer that may become 
a part of 6G communication systems.